My name is Father Mark Sainer. I'm the Provincial Minister for the Franciscan Friars of St. John the Baptist Province. I'm here today to talk to you about something that's important to me. The protests after the death of George Floyd have led us to a moment of crisis. A crisis is a turning point, a moment of both opportunity and danger. Today's moment has been compressed in the pressure cooker of a quarantine and economic pain. Protests in the United States are actually important ways for us to change historically when ordinary means don't work. I do not condone the destruction and looting done by a few of the protesters, but I cannot stand by when others have a foot on their neck, lest I become complicit by merely watching. So as a white person, I'd like to discuss a reality that those of us in the dominant culture rarely notice. Most of us don't have overt, racially biased behavior. Consequently, we don't realize that we benefit from being privileged as white people. Because I've never been a person of color, I don't recognize the cultural passport I've been given. This is known as white privilege. Normally, only an outsider can spot these attitudes of entitlement in us, and it helps if we listen. The experience of people of color on police brutality or workplace discrimination, for example, can easily be dismissed by myself because it's not my experience. It's called white blindness. In 1986, I attended the Black Catholic Institute at Xavier University in New Orleans. There, gradually, I learned to recognize my own unconscious biases and benefits that white being white can bring. I misread social, social situations there and at times made a complete fool of myself. At times I still do. The students and professors helped me to gently notice, to be aware of my own embarrassment, and to commit to changing my behavior and to commit to speaking out. This is how I caught on to my own white privilege. And frankly, this is an ongoing process in me. White privilege hides itself because white people can live separately in this culture. And generally we don't experience what it's like to live under suspicion. So let me give you a couple of examples. I can walk into a store late in the evening and probably no one will think that I'm there to rob the store. Most Americans don't worry that they're being followed by undercover detectives in a Walmart. Black Americans generally wonder. If I have a responsible job, no one thinks I got it because of a quota. And there are countless other examples of further unearned privilege as a white American. It's for this reason people are protesting. And protest we should. Pope Francis said recently, my friends, we cannot tolerate or turn a blind eye to racism and exclusion in any form, and yet claim to defend the sacredness of human life. So if all lives matter, that definitely means that black lives matter. What can we do? Besides protesting, we can engage in conversations that matter with people of ethnicity other than our own. Perhaps we can ask someone we know as a coworker, what were the protests like for you? Perhaps we can actually ask later, how do you think we got here? Learning a history, for example, that wasn't taught in our high schools can help us understand better. Our dialogue can make us richer and wiser. Two, we need to work for specific actions of justice. The scholar Dr. Cornell West used to say that justice is what love looks like in public. If we love others, we need to work to change laws so that everyone can receive health care, that everyone has access to safe housing, decent food, gainful employment. We need to vote 
and ensure that laws protect all human life. And at this moment, for racial minorities, at this very time that Black Lives Matter, justice is what love looks like in public. And always, we need to pray. Those who move into God begin to experience certain periods of unknowing, of confusion, of embarrassment, what the spiritual writers call the dark night. Sound like this crisis? I think it does. Often, our own spiritual smallness and confusion with the powers of evil need to change. God busts open the smallness of his friends and then provides healing, a balm in Gilead that makes the wounded whole. God helps us to see one another as brothers and sisters, to develop new ties that bind as members of God's beloved community. Only deep prayer will help us to see our interconnectedness, the vulnerability that is a treasure. Yes, this moment of crisis can help us demand that Black Lives Matter. This crisis is a turning point for all lives to matter.